Hello everybody and welcome to another Guild Wars 2 video. Today we are going to be talking about the Revenant Elite Specialization lore that was introduced in Path of Fire. The lore NPC for the Revenant is actually located in Elon Riverlands in Palawa's Grace. We're looking for Goria Halfcut. Now Goria is a char who's migrated down here. The, the Revenant doesn't have lore that's based in the Elonan area in the Crystal Desert. So it's going to be slightly different. It's actually based on historical char character Kayla Scorchraiser. Let's see what Goria has to say. Hmm, you're not wilting in this heat. That's good. Might want to find yourself some shade just in case. What sort of revenant are you? Call me a renegade. I'm learning to evoke Kayla Scorchraiser. She was patient. So I'll patiently answer your questions. As long as they're not long and there aren't many of them. Kayla Scorchraiser? The sun must have cooked your brain. Kayla Scorchraiser united the Legion. She fought to free her sisters from bondage and overthrew the Flame Legion even as the world stood against her. How did she do that? By putting her life on the line time and again, she won equality for her sisters in single combat, then brought together char of iron, ash, and blood to stand as one. What about the Flame Legion? With the three legions beside her, she crushed the Flame Legion and accepted their surrender, but those honorless hairballs murdered her even after she'd shown them mercy. I have something else I'd like to ask. What weapons did she use? She led powerful ambushes wielding a short bow though her real weapon was her razor-sharp warband, an unstoppable machine assembled from every legion and built on teamwork. I have another question. What powers have you discovered? I'm still figuring it out. Interestingly, I've caught glimpses of the old Black Citadel. I'm not sure why. If only I knew as much about the Revenant powers as Ritlock Brimstone. Can I ask you something else? What are you doing out here? My warband failed. I came here for solitude while I explore Ka Kayla's teachings. Alona is a spiritually powerful place and I needed to get away from my old life. All right, so this is actually a really interesting story. I wanted to go a little bit more in depth about who Kayla Scorchraiser was and what the role she played in the Char history because it's, it's really, really cool. At least I think so. So let's get started. Revolutions eat their heroes. Pyre Fear Shot, 1078 AE. So a year after he said those words, Kayla, his grand cub, was born, right? And I believe that Kayla grew up listening to the stories of, of Pyre Fearshot, who stood up and began, who began the spark of the Char Rebellion against the Flame Legion. She grew up hearing the stories about her grandsire and how he fought to free her people. There are no gods for the Char. I believe she grew up hearing this. I think she was angry, right? She, she, was, she was angry that the Char, a once proud and fierce warrior people, were beholden to these false gods, angry that women of her race were thought inferior and weak, not trained to fight but to cook, clean, and breed. The faux fire had devastated the Char in Ascalon and firmly began to plant the seeds of mistrust among magic users, mainly the shamans and the flame legions themselves. I think that this was the spark. Seeing this, seeing how the faux fire the evil that it had brought to the Char lands, to Ascalon. I believe that Kayla began to train here. I think that she was around 11 years old when the faux fire hit, so she began to train in secret. And over the next 26 years, she trained herself, and she trained at least hundreds, if not thousands, of other Char women across all of the legions except for Flame to fight in secret, knowing that to be caught was death. Either directly or through her, many of these women were trained and they waited patiently for their chance at freedom. As the rebellion continued, more and more Char began to stand against the Flame Legion. Kayla spread the knowledge that the Flame Legion were cheating the Char of their right to chart their own destiny. Many male Chars agreed with her, but believed that the females were unfit to fight alongside them. Scorchraiser, to counter this argument, 
she challenged the leader of the Iron Legion, Forge Iron Strike, to single combat. And though she was physically weaker than him, she was both faster and more skilled, and she eventually won. This united the Iron, the Blood, and the Ash Legions against the Flame Legion. And with the women by their side fighting, trained by her, they had outnumbered the Flame Legion. And on the plains of Golgaheim, they had their final battle. Seeing that they were outnumbered, the Flame Legion surrendered and Kayla accepted their surrender so that the Char would not be stripped of the power of the Flame Legion Shaman. But in a shameful act of cowardice, the Flame Legion leader, when meeting Kayla for the first time, stabbed her with a poison dagger. Now, Iron Strike immediately sliced the Char's throat, but Kayla, who has spent the last 20 years training women Char to be warriors once again, lay there in the dirt dying, and her last words were, at least I die knowing my sisters are free. So the cool thing about the Revenant specialization isn't really how it ties into the overarching story of Path of Fire, isn't how it ties into the land of, of Alona or the Crystal Desert itself, it's this particular character that they decided to go with. And I like, I like it. I, I do. Like when I, as I was, when, you know, when you start to learn about who Kayla was and, and what she did, and and everything that she was about and what she stood for and when you see the skills that the devs had put in on on the revenant she's leading there's and this is how i like to think of it every skill you use the short bow on right when you're when you're invoking kayla when you're invoking kayla as a revenant every time you fire a bow every time you summon a companion all those women are answering the call of the 20 plus years of training that she did. They're answering, they are following her even to this day, even after death, they are still answering the call from the mist. And I, I find that so cool. <laughs> I don't know guys, I find that so awesome that that she, she, she can evoke that kind of loyalty that even when someone is drawing upon her and fighting with her evoking like you're, you're 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 fighting they're still answering the call because she was their leader and i think that that's so cool i hope that you guys enjoyed this let me know in the comments what you think this is a little bit different from what i'm, I'm used to making but this story was a little bit different and i wanted to kind of tell it in a, in a in a pretty unique way so i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you have a great day peace <laughs>